Well, a warm welcome to today's talk. It's Friday the 7th of April and I wish you a reflective Good Friday and a happy Easter weekend. Now, I'm going to read uh, the conclusion of this article that I want to talk about here. The conclusion is, uh, using a robust quasi-experimental approach, we found no evidence that mask policy significantly impacts the rate of nosocomial sars coronavirus 2 infection with the Omicron variant. And nosocomial means healthcare required because this was carried out in hospital. So of all the subjects, that were, well, probably not of all the subjects, but on the top three or four subjects uh, uh, that's generated uh, con- controversy and political divide during this pandemic, mask wearing has certainly been one of them. And the evidence now is accumulating, at least in the Omicron times, that they are not making much difference. At least we can say that in this healthcare setting. That's what this is about. If you want to know more about it, stick around. If not, thank you for watching so far. Tune in again, but let's look at the details now. Now this is uh, unmasking the mask. A time series analysis of nosocomial COVID-19 rates before and after removal. So this is quasi-experimental. Now, of course, an experiment has to contain uh, an in- intervention group that get the intervention, a control group, and allocation to those groups has to be randomised. Th- then it's experimental, like a clinical trial. This is quasi-experimental because it lacks randomization, But it does have an intervention group and it does have a control group, and so it's a pretty good study. St George's Hospital in uh, London. And importantly, the authors declare no conflict of interest <laughs> And this study, unlike other studies that could be mentioned, um, uh, was not funded. So uh, no reason for the data to be biased for economic reasons, which is always important to think about these days, unfortunately. Now, this is actually an abstract. Now, it's absolutely normal to release abstracts prior to conferences. And the conference here is the European Society of Clinical Microbiology and Infectious Diseases. So this is going to be actually given... Uh, at this conference now we could say for conference papers that the peer review process takes place at the conference so in essence this is a preprint really it's an abstract but it's going to be a pretty powerful one and it's already hit a lot of uh, mainstream media who've reported on this not always very accurately i don't think uh, this i don't don't think they've reported always accurately that's why we've gone back to the original data and the original paper of course so that's the original link that we have Um, anything in the media is derived from this, whether that is interpretations or indeed misinterpretations. Uh, These are the authors based in St George's Hospital, one of the big teaching hospitals in London. So quite a reputable uh, setup. Um, Now, the background to this study, um, mask wearing has been part of a package of infection control measures employed to reduce nosocomial. Nosocomial just means hospital acquired, healthcare acquired, literally it means infection so if you catch a disease off your nurse or doctor that's nosocomial or another nurse or doctor catches off a patient that's nosocomial um throughout the pandemic now they say low tech low cost interventions without well established benefit was reasonable in the context of the early pandemic i think this is true um mask wearing actually doesn't cost that much it leaves a lot of litter and uh, rubbish to be cleared away you do see masks lying around all over the place quite uh, quite distasteful um, but in the early pandemic, we really didn't know, and um, it wasn't uh, unreasonable to assume that they might work, at least in some contexts. Um, so we didn't know then. However, with the reduction in the severity of COVID-19 disease, and now the authors are going to make a really powerful point that other interventions have not taken fully on board. So um, now you're ready for that. Um In later variants, the risk-benefit balance becomes more questionable. The risk-benefit balance becomes more questionable. We need to look at this in all areas of intervention, and governments around the world very often have not, or not adequately, taken into account the difference in the risk-benefit analysis. Now we have the less pathogenic but more contagious Omicron, Now we have huge amounts of community uh, immunity. Wish that more people would take this on board. If that's all you take from this study, then that's that's enough. But there is more, and it's interesting. So uh, routinely collected data, 40-week period, so pretty good. Now, the intervention group, or the study group, uh, what they did was um, they stopped wearing masks. So that was the intervention. 
the intervention was that they stopped wearing masks at a particular point. That was it. They just stopped wearing masks. Uh, the majority, for the majority of the wards at 26, uh, at 26 weeks of this period, so 26 weeks into the 40 weeks, they stopped wearing masks. Good. So that gives the intervention groups, that's the no mask group in essence there. Of course, they had a control group subject to a subset of specific wards that carried on wearing masks. So they carried on wearing masks. They stopped wearing masks. It gives a nice comparison. For both groups, the underlying rate infe of infection was influenced by the community rate, of course, as people come into hospital, as identified by unselected admission screening. So people were admitted to hospital, of course, on need and screened on admission. Omicron variant, of course, through out that's why the risk benefit analysis has definitely changed now um let's let's start a graphic now this is this is quite interesting so this is the um this is the um experimental group so here we see what we see here is the green line here is hospital acquired infection and that mirrored the amount of hospital the amount of infection of people admitted to hospital so more people admitted to hospital with infection more people in hospital got infection Less people admitted to hospital with infection, less people in hospital acquired infection in hospital. And that mirrored that really quite precisely. But all this time here, up to this dotted line, they were wearing masks. Then here, uh, they stopped wearing masks. And again, when the infection, there was a surge in Omicron there. And again, there was a small surge in uh, infections there. But you can see it's basically matching. Now, if you do look at the mathematics, there is a very small effect of masks here. If you look at the, if you compare all these points mathematically, and you compare all these points mathematically, <clears throat> there's actually a very slight difference, but it's not significant, not a significant difference at all. And uh, here's the control group here. So we see that um, now that's when the other group stopped wearing masks, but of course the control group carried on wearing masks uh, all the way through. So here they, uh, they were, here they were wearing masks. And if you average all these lines out, you get this slight downward trend. Here they still were wearing masks, but we get this upward trend. Um, now, this is not significant. This is not saying that um, wearing masks increase infection. It may, but this data is not saying that. Um, but it is saying there was a, an increase, more than twice as likely, actually. Uh, but after that period, but bear in mind, the conditions here were the same. Here they were wearing masks. Here they were wearing masks. So no uh, no uh, differences um, be, be, between between what was happening. They just carried on wearing masks. Yet did get more infection in that period. Um, but not significantly so. So obviously in these sort of studies, we're going to get some random fluctuation, what we call random noise, but it's not significant. That's the key thing, that no difference was identified. <coughs> now, <clears throat> um, results for the study group. In the context of a surge of uh, SARS coronavirus 2 infection, the removal of mask policy was not associated with a statistically significant change in the rate of nosocomial infection. So wearing masks didn't make a difference. Uh, to the rate of infection. Um, incident rate ratio was 1.11. So there was a slight, slight increase, but but not, not significantly at all. In fact, and as we saw, there was actually a greater increase in the control group, but this is not, uh, did not reach significance. So we don't need to worry about it. Um, and, and then they, they carried on looking at uh, post-intervention analysis to look if there's an ident identifiable trend after the event. And there, again, no, no difference, 1.1. 1 .1. So you could say 1% more, but, but you know, that does, is not really an effect at all. So no immediate effect, no um, delayed effect. For the con control group, no immediate change in infection rate. Now, the, uh, the actual incidence rate ratio did go up to 2.56, as we saw by that line, uh, in those that were um, wearing masks after this date. Uh, that could indicate some change in the transmissibility of the virus, potentially. But given that they were wearing masks then, given that they were wearing masks then, um, it's, it, there's, no, there's no difference, essentially. At least it's not mathematically, it's not statistically significant, so even though if you analyse the data on a very fine scale, you do get this mathematical increase in infection after the uh, intervention was implemented on the other wards. And again, uh, delayed effect, nothing, 1.08. So um, 
that's it's pretty uh it's pretty good study this actually um why such a study wasn't conducted a long time ago is really hard to say i think it's one of those things that just became politicized and proper researchers were a bit frightened off uh, let's hope proper research is not being frightened off from other areas of study uh, uh related to um healthcare interventions of any sort whether pandemic related or not conclusion using a robust quasi experimental approach i agree it was robust it wasn't fully experimental because it didn't have the randomization otherwise it's uh, excellent we found no evidence that a mass policy significantly impacts the rate of nosocomial sars coronavirus to infection with the omicron variant now given that it didn't make any difference with omicron and of course, Omicron is way more transmissible than Wuhan, way more transmissible than Delta, way more transmissible than Alpha. If it didn't make a difference with Omicron, to be quite honest, it's quite hard to see that it would have made any difference at all in the less transmissible uh, variants. Now, the masks they're talking about are these ones here, these paper masks. So Winston's put his back on again now. He's a very cautious dog. So given the evidence, I think we can take that off, Winston, let you breathe freely and not so much that you can breathe freely but that um people in uh, especially in healthcare can see your face because face-to-face -face communication with our nurses and doctors is absolutely crucial to communication in healthcare you know, we, we used to spend uh, days teaching communication skills and if you can't see someone's face well you know listen to this video with a, with a picture of it well in my case it might be a slight improvement but normally seeing someone's face is a definite uh, massive communication advantage these whole aspects of non non-verbal communication of course so there you go that didn't work now we did talk about this Cochrane review a few weeks ago and man did that generate did that generate a lot of heat um so i thought i'd check on it um uh cochrane there was debate about did the researchers clarify their position well it's now quite a few weeks later and i've gone straight to their website again this is direct from their website so all i can say is quoting directly from the cochrane website that's this morning friday the 7th of april 2023 they are saying we are uncertain whether wearing masks or N95 P2 respirators helps to slow the spread of respiratory viruses based on studies we assessed. So despite all the heat generated, um, this is still what they're saying, direct from the site this morning. Do check it out. Now, hand hygiene, we're going to talk more about that maybe in the next video, but interesting. Uh, hand hygiene programs do <clears throat> seem to be making a slight difference. Author's conclusion uh, from the Cochrane, the pooled results of RCTs did not show a clear reduction in the respiratory viral infection with the use of medical surgical masks. So there you go. Um, no evidence that masks are reducing, at least surgical masks, no evidence from this study that they are reducing the spread of the massively uh, infectious Omicron variant within hospitals, as evidenced by clear data from the controls and the intervention groups um two things to take away um if people are wearing masks in hospital now um i can't see what the evidence is the evidence seems to be accumulating well, is accumulating that it doesn't, doesn't make any difference so let's start communicating clearly with our patients again uh, that they can see our faces in in hospital and the other thing is the, perhaps the most important lesson from this is this should have been done years ago but because it was politicized i think that's the reason it wasn't we have to take political vested interest out of scientific research whatever it is whatever it is and i would add that we have to take financial interest out of medical scientific research as well although quite how we do that is a little more tricky so uh specific and general lessons learned um nice piece of work thank you for the, that from the researchers of st george's hospital in uh, london and if there's any uh, major peer review influence comes from that the paper's actually going to be presented in a about a week's time i think but certainly within the next week or two then of course we'll report back if there's any significant uh, changes to that but the data 
Just let the data speak. Um, keep political influence out of things. Keep financial interests out of things. Thank you for watching.